بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر اشر ظہیر یور کورس انسٹرکٹر آئی ایم ہیئر ٹو فور لیکچر نمبر نائن فار دس پرٹیکولر سبجیکٹ ڈیٹ از آپریشن مینجمنٹ وی ور ڈسکسنگ اباؤٹ دی لینئر پروگرامنگ اینڈ وی ڈسکسڈ سم امپورٹنٹ اسٹیپس ڈیٹ ہاؤ وی شوڈ بی ایبل ٹو ریزولو دا ڈفرینٹ پرابلمس ریلیٹڈ ٹو لینئر پروگرامنگ Uh, there were the different steps like uh, first of all we'll have to formulate our objective function uh, we'll have to decide of course uh, first about our decision variables uh, then we'll have to uh, identify the different constraints every organization has the constraints that constraints may be related to the human beings that may be related to the uh, machinery so we'll have to identify those constraints and should be able to represent those constraints in the form of equations or in the form of inequalities and finally we discussed about the different graphical method uh, that how we can uh, find out the best combination of the two uh, 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 for example the products uh, in order to maximize uh, the profit in the organizational setting up till now we discussed mostly about one of the objective function that is the maximization in which we were more interested in maximization of the profit but as you know we uh, sometimes we are also interested in uh, minimization of cost so today onward uh, in this lecture or uh, in the forthcoming lecture we will discuss some uh, problems uh, related to the minimization of the uh, cost that how we can minimize the cost again within the particular limits uh, of the uh, organizations uh, setting and uh, finally again uh, the same method will be used uh, that is the graphical method in order to uh, minimize uh, the cost then we'll also discuss that if there are more than two constraints how we can uh, put those constraints on a graph and how this graph uh, will help us to find out the optimal uh, points that is the uh, with respect to uh, point corner point method and finally how would we able to minimize the cost in uh, this particular case so let's start uh, discussing about the minimization problem in perspective of that uh, linear programming technique so our today's lecture is about uh, minimization uh, and mostly we will discuss about the minimization of cost let's discuss about uh, the different steps or how it is uh, similar to that method of profit maximization again in this minimization problem we formulated and solved in much the same way as maximization problems so the method is almost same the steps are almost same there is a difference we will just discuss as we will go through uh, the different steps of uh, solving of the problems in the graphical approach an iso cost line is used you remember uh, for the uh, maximization of profit we uh, talked about the iso profit line so now we if we are interested in the minimization of cost so we will talk about the iso cost line not the iso profit line the objective in this particular case is to move the iso cost line inwards until it reaches the lowest cost corner method or lowest cost uh, the corner point so class as you remember when we, when we were discussing about uh, that uh, method uh, which may be helpful to find out the optimal point that is the iso profit uh, line method what we did we put some hypothetical uh, value uh, in the objective function Uh, which comes under the area of the feasible region then what happened we try to move that uh, uh, profit line away from uh, that uh, feasible region up to the end point of that feasible region so that we can find out the optimal point so the point is we try to move away that iso profit line but if we are interested in the minimization of cost then what we will do again we will take some hypothetical value for that cost uh, function then 
we will try to move it inward rather than going out outward that was a case uh, with that uh, uh, profit maximization so that is uh, what is different in case of that iso uh, cost line and iso profit line that is in uh, in iso profit line we move away and uh, in case of iso cost line method we move inwards towards uh, the last point of the uh, uh, feasible region so that uh, we are able to find out that uh, what is the optimal uh, point uh, which would tell us about the optimum combination uh, on x axis and on y axis which can help us to uh, minimize the cost so that is uh, what is different in case of uh, minimization problems so let's uh, take uh, an example of that minimization uh, problem suppose x1 is the number of tons of black and white picture chemicals produced and x2 is the number of tons of colors pictures chemicals produced our total minimization cost function is equal to 2500x1 plus 3000x2 now what is meant by uh, this particular uh, cost function it means that if uh, there is one if we produce one unit of x1 it will bear the cost of 2500 rupees or 2500 dollars similarly if we produce one unit of x2 it will bear the cost of 3000 dollars so if we produce x1 number of uh, products and um, for that that is the black and white picture chemical so if we uh, produce one unit of that uh, black and white uh, picture chemicals then it will bear a cost equal to 2500 and if we produce one unit of uh, that color of picture chemicals produced then it will bear the cost of 3000 so the total minimization cost by adding the total cost in either these cases will be 2500x1 plus 3000x2 in this particular example this cost function is already given to you we were just interpreting that uh, what is meant by uh, that uh, cost function now again there are some constraints as were there uh, in the case of uh, profit maximization problems here the constraints are the first constraint is x1 should be greater than or equal to 30 tons of black and white chemicals so we cannot use uh, the value of x1 less than 30 its value should always be greater than or equal to 30 so you uh, must remember that when we were starting the uh, linear programming uh, problems we talked about three types of constraints one constraint was equal to and less than constraints the others were equal to and greater than constraints the other uh, constraints may also be in the form of equation that is equality so in this particular case this is the case of equal to greater than constraint previously we have just talked about the less than equal to constraints in case of uh, uh, profit maximization so in this case the, this is the, the example of greater than equal to constraint the second constraint in this particular case is x2 is greater than equal to 20 tons of color chemical which means that if you want to produce a product by the combination of both of these uh, uh, chemicals then this is the limit of using that chemical if we use below that uh, particular limit the uh, that will not work actually for the uh, chemist or some uh, operation manager so these are the two constraints that is x1 is greater than or equal to 30 the next one is x2 is greater than or equal to 20 tons of color chemical there is another constraint that is x1 plus x2 again it is equal to or greater than 60 tons that is the sum of x1 and x2 quantity of uh, those chemicals should be equal to or greater than 60 so these are uh, this is uh, the third constraint so in this particular case there is an cost function in which we are interested to minimize it there are three constraint functions and again we have uh, represented these constraint functions in the form of inequalities x1 x2 is greater than 0 these are the non negative uh, constraints now again we have already discussed that what are the non negative constraints 
non negative constants um, are taken in the sense that x1 x2 value should not be and cannot be uh, less than zero that cannot be negative because we are talking about the quantity of a product and the quantity of the product used or uh, particular chemicals used cannot be in the negative so uh, these are the uh, non negative constraints that the value of x1 and x2 is always equal to or greater than zero so these are so this is the particular analysis of the uh, problem uh, presented in this particular situation and now let's uh, solve this situation and again the almost the similar method will be used as we used in uh, maximization problems now class we have first constraint first of all uh, we already have the cost function represented in the form of an equation now what we'll have to do we'll have to draw the different constraints on a graph now this is the graph and again this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and again with the uh, interval of 10 you have taken the values on uh, x, uh, x axis and you have taken the values on y axis so first of all we will draw the first constraint and what is the first constraint that is x1 is equal to or greater than 30 there is no value of x2 for this particular constraint now how we will draw this particular constraint on uh, our line now this is the x-axis and our uh, equality uh, inequality is x1 is greater than or equal to 30 now this is the point on x-axis where the value of uh, x1 is equal to 30 now we will have a point uh, at this particular uh, x-axis and we will draw a straight line parallel to the y-axis now this is actually the line uh, for this particular constraint which we have converted into the uh, equality we have already discussed that the first step uh, for the uh, inequalities are that we will have to first convert it into the equality and then we will convert that uh, equation uh, and we will draw that equation on graph so this is x1 is equal to 30 and this is the point on x axis there is no y axis means that we will draw the line parallel to y axis as our constraint is x1 greater than or equal to 30 if we consider only this particular line then our feasible region only for this particular line or this constraint is the area away from this line now this one is not the feasible region because it is less than or equal to 30 you know these values are less than or equal to 30 but our feasible region for this particular constraint is this one but again we are also interested some, uh, in some other constraints let's draw the next constraint what was the next constraint our next constraint was that the value of x2 should be greater, uh, greater than or equal to 20 now x2 is uh, we have taken that x2 on y axis and this is the point where uh, the value of x2 is 20 again in this case there is no value given for uh, x1 it means that we will draw a parallel line that is actually parallel to x axis so this is uh, this line actually represents our second uh, constraint which is converted now into the uh, equality that is x2 is equal to 20 now again if we consider the feasible region only for this particular line that will be the region away from this line again we are talking about the greater than equal to constraints either the values will be feasible on this line because of that equality uh, sign or will have to move move away from that line that is greater than sign so what is the common uh, region up till now we have just drawn two constraints there is a third constraint we'll also draw it but up till now we have drawn two constraints and if we only consider these two constraints then our feasible region will be what now this area will be our feasible region why this is the feasible region because this is the area which is greater than this line as well as greater than this line so this is our um, feasible region now let's draw the third constraint that is x1 plus x2 is equal to 60 
Now again for this particular constraint we will use the similar method that is we will have to identify the different points on this particular equation that uh, what are the different points to which we can draw a particular line for uh, this equation. Now how we will get those points? First of all again the same method you will put x1 is equal to 0 you will get the value of x2 and then you will put the value of x2 is equal to 0 and you will get the value of uh, x1. So in this particular case because uh, this is the equation like uh, x1 plus x2 is equal to 60 the points will be 0, 60 and 60, 0. Now this is the point that is representing the point 60, 0 that is the x-axis value is 60 and y-axis value is 0 and this is the point that is 0, 60 x coordinate is 0 and y coordinate is uh, 60 so what we will do we will just link uh, these two points in the form of line and this is our actually third constraint now class up till now what we did we draw all of the three constraints on the particular graph in order to have the idea that what can be our feasible region now what is feasible region in this case again this is the area which is away from all of the three lines that is the line 1 line 2 and line 3 this is our feasible region now again uh, you must understand why this sort of region is the feasible region because this is the area which is fulfilling all of our limitations all of our constraints because in all of these three cases we were interested in equal to and uh, greater than sort of uh, condition so our, this area will be the feasible region now the next point is we have um, uh, identified our feasible region now we'll have to identify that what is the optimal point on this particular uh, feasible region which can uh, maximize our profit now class again in this particular method we can use the two methods as we have already used in case of that uh, profit maximization case the one method is that ISO uh, cost line in this particular case which was termed as ISO profit line in that of maximization case so either we can use that ISO cost line method and what is the ISO cost line method that is we will just uh, take some hypothetical value for our cost function in order to draw the cost function somewhere here on that feasible region and then what we will do we will change the uh, those hypothetical values of our cost function to move it parallel towards this uh, particular line which is the outermost line uh, in this particular case so we will move inward in this case you remember when we were discussing about the maximization problem or the profit maximization problem we were taking away the line but in this particular case if we are interested to use that ISO cost line method we will have to move that ISO uh, cost line towards uh, that um, origin so that we can find out the uh, extreme point uh, of that feasible region which is actually or which may actually be your optimal point but again we can always use that corner point method which is uh, sometimes more suitable uh, uh, method uh, in uh, use for uh, linear programming so if we take into account the corner method we can easily identify that at what points our cost may be minimized now again class this is your feasible region and what are the corner points you know linear programming guides us that our uh, profit may be maximized or cost may be minimized on any of the corner method so important are the corner method so this is our first um, the feasible region and this and uh, this point and this one is our corner point so there are two corner points in this particular case that is the point A and the other one is the point B so our profit will be maximized either at this point A and this point B so you must uh, understand that how we can identify the corner point in that uh, minimization case that is almost similar that uh, we used for that profit maximization problem but in this particular case we are actually 
uh, interested in the uh, area which is outer side of the uh, uh, particular lines. So, in this particular case, the feasible and the most uh, corner points are point A and point B. Now, what we'll have to do, we'll have to determine the coordinates for this point A and B. And finally, we will put these coordinates in the cost function so that we can have the different alternatives. And again, that uh, cost function uh, will tell us that uh, what is the mo uh, optimal point, either A or the point B. Now class, let's suppose uh, we take into count the point A. Now this is, the, uh, this is our cost function, that is 2500x1 plus 3000x2. Now you people must have known that how we calculate uh, uh, the point A. Now you can see that point A is the intersection of this line where y is equal to 20 and the intersection of this line where x1 plus x2 is equal to 60. So what we will do, this is the point where x2, which is x2 on the y-axis, this is the point where the value of x2 is equal to 20. So this is the point of intersection because there is no x1 involved uh, in this particular case. What we will do, we will put this value of x2 is equal to 20 in this equation. Why we will do it? Because these, um, uh, this point is the point of intersection of both of these lines. So by putting x2 value equal to 20 in this equation x1 is e plus x2 is equal to 60 we will get the value of x1 equal to 40. Okay? So that is the point uh, uh, which is the point A actually and uh, if we put that particular point that is x1 is equal to 40 and x2 is equal to 20 in that cost function we will get the value of uh, cost function equal to $160,000. So you see what we did we identify the corner point which was actually the intersection of two different lines. So we uh, solve those two different lines as you have already solved uh, uh, different lines in case of that maximization problem. So we get the values of uh, x1 and x2 equal to 40 and 20. Putting that value in the cost function we got the total cost at uh, one of the corner point equal to $160,000. Now let's uh, consider the other point, the other corner point, and that is the point B. Now, how we can uh, find out the coordinates for the points B? Again, this is the point B, and uh, as you can see that uh, at the point B is the point of intersection for this particular line that is parallel to y-axis, and this particular line that is x1 plus x2 is equal to 60. As at this point of intersection, the value of uh, x1 is equal to 30. We will put this value of x1 30 in this equation, that is x1 plus x2 is equal to 60. So we will get the value of uh, x2 equal to 30 um, as well. So the point uh, will be 30, 30, that is x coordinate is equal to 30 and y co coordinate is equal to 30. So in this way we can find out the uh, coordinates of the point B. Now if we put this point B on this uh, cost function that is 2500x1 plus 3000x2 putting x1 is equal to 30, x2 is equal to 30 we can get the uh, cost function equal to $165,000. Now class we identify the most feasible uh, region then we identified the corner point method uh, referring uh, to that uh, corner point method of maximization or minimization of cost and in this particular case again we were interested in minimization of cost we uh, find out the intersection points we put out uh, the values of the corner points into the cost function we got the two values of cost functions and finally we can decide that uh, at what combination of x1 and x2 our cost may be minimized. So what is that combination? That is the 40 units or 40 turns of uh, this one x1 and 20 units or 10, 20 turns of this uh, uh, product x2 will minimize our cost. And what is the minimized cost? That is $160,000. So this is our uh, minimum cost function. By using this sort of product mix for our chemicals, 
that is x1 and uh, x2, we can minimize our cost. So students, this was the particular example that uh, how we can minimize the cost uh, by using that linear programming method. And again, in this particular case, we use graphical method. Up till now, uh, we have talked about only the graphical method of uh, linear programming. And uh, as we uh, discussed earlier, that there are the two methods which can be used uh, to solve the linear programming uh, related problems. One is the graphical method, the other one is the simplex method. But up till now, we have used that graphical method. Before our two days lecture, we were uh, practicing about uh, uh, maximization problems, that uh, how we can maximize our profit. And today, uh, in the first example, uh, we discussed about uh, the case that if we are interested in minimization of the cost, then how we can find the combination of our uh, product mix so that our cost may be minimized. Let's take uh, another example of that uh, uh, minimization of cost uh, function. Now suppose the cost function is given to you as uh, c is equal to 40x plus 50y. Now this is our cost uh, function in which we are interested uh, to minimize this uh, cost function. So this is our main cost function. There are three particular constraints uh, in this particular case. That is 3x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 150. And we have represented this inequality by that uh, number 1. The second uh, constraint is 5x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 200. The third constraint uh, is 3x plus y is greater than or equal to 60. Now again, all of the, the, these three constraints are greater than or equal to. Up till now, we have discussed the different cases in which uh, there were either, either the constraints that were less than or equal to. Now we are discussing about the constraints which uh, are greater than or equal to. There may be the constraints which are the mixture of that uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to which means that suppose it may be the case that some organization may have some constraints in which, uh, um, for which uh, uh, some of the constraints in, uh, uh, we are dealing with less than or equal to and in some of the constraints we, are, uh, we may be interested about greater than or equal to. In the next coming lecture, we'll also uh, discuss uh, one of that type of uh, example. So in this particular case, there are three uh, cases and the constraints which are represented by these three inequalities, again non-negativity constraints are x, y greater than or equal to 0. Again, non-negativity means these variables uh, cannot have some negative value. So this is uh, with re uh, relevance to that non-negativity constraints. Now again, class, uh, you already know that uh, how to solve these equations. First of all, we will take the equation 1. That is the actually inequality uh, 1. We will put that in, uh, inequality into 0. And by putting x is equal to 0, we can get the value of y. And by putting y is equal to 0, we can get the value of uh, x. So we can have the two points for that particular constraint. That is 0, 30 and 50, 0. So now we uh, would be able to draw this, uh, these two particular points on the graph in order to have a line for this particular constraint. This is the second line. That is 5x plus 5y is equal to 200. Again, by putting x is equal to 0, we get the y value as 40. And by putting y is equal to 0, we get the value of x, 40. So again, these are the two points uh, which uh, we will draw on that particular graph in order to represent our uh, constraint number 2. For the third line, again, the equation is 3x plus y is equal to 60. That is, we have converted that inequality uh, of constraint into the equation form. Putting x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 60. Putting y is equal to 0, we get x is equal to 20. Again, we have the two points and, uh, which can be used to draw the third line on that particular graph. This is the particular uh, graph in this particular case. Now, what uh, we will do? We will just plot uh, those constraints um, in this graph. Now class, this is our first line. This is our first line which, which is represented by num and that number 1. As I told you that uh, whenever you are drawing these sort of uh, graphs, 
it is always better to give some number when you are drawing that particular line on this graph. So we have given this uh, line the number 1 so that we can easily identify that uh, from where that uh, uh, line is being starting and at what point it is being uh, ended and at what points a particular line intersects with the other points. So it is always uh, good to uh, uh, draw that graph in that particular fashion. This is our first line. This is our second line where the coordinates are 40, 0 and 0, 40. And this is our third line represented by this number 3. And these are the uh, relevant uh, coordinates on x-axis and y-axis. So we have drawn all of these uh, three lines. Now suppose uh, we are uh, interested in uh, to find out the feasible region. Then what will be the feasible region? Because again in all of these three constraints we are interested to find out the area which is away from um, all of uh, these three lines because of that greater than or equal to sign. Either we will operate on the line or we will operate away from, from the line. So we'll have to find some common area which is away from all of the three lines. So as you can see from that shaded area that uh, this is the feasible region for uh, this particular example. That is point A, that is point B. We don't know the value of point B yet, uh, but we know that point B is the intersection of line 3 and is the intersection of line 2. So we, know, we can always calculate uh, the coordinates of point B. The third feasible point or the corner point is C. Again, what is point C? That is the intersection of line 2 and the intersection of line 1. Again, by, putting, by solving the uh, line 1 and line 2, we can get always the coordinates of C. And the last feasible point is D, which is actually on the x-axis, for which we are already uh, know about the coordinates, that is uh, x is equal to 50 and y is equal to 0. So class, our corner points uh, are A, B, C, and D. These are the four corner points uh, which have been identified by using that uh, corner point method. Now our cost will be minimized at uh, any one of these two points. But in order to identify the uh, optimal points, we'll have to calculate the coordinates for this particular point B and this particular point C. So let's solve uh, equation 2 and 3 in order to find the coordinates of B because B is the intersection of line 2 and 3. This is line 2, this is line 3 and uh, again we will multiply equation 3 by 5 in order to equate the coordinates of uh, uh, y-axis. So we, mul we will multiply equation 3 by 5 in order to equate the coefficients of y we will subtract both of these equations and finally we get the value of x equal to 10. Now by putting this value of x uh, equal to 10 in either in the equation 2 or in equation 3 we will get the value of y equal to 30. Now class we have the coordinates for point B that is 10 and 30. The next uh, the corner point was C that was actually the intersection of line 1 and line 2. Now again this is the line 1 equation, this is the line 2 equation. Now uh, already the uh, coefficients are uh, same so we'll just subtract both of these equations and we will get the value of x is equal to 25. Now again by putting the value of x is equal to 25 in equation 1 or 2 we get the value of y equal to 15. So this is our uh, next point uh, that is the point C 25 and 15. Now what uh, uh, we did, we uh, calculate the coordinates for our uh, points of intersection of the different lines. Now we are in a position to make that cost table so that uh, we can put the different uh, values of these uh, corner points in the cost function and that will uh, give the uh, idea that uh, how we can minimize our cost. So this is our cost table. These are the corner points, that is the point A, 
point B, point C, and point D. These are the relevant coordinates for uh, these uh, corner points. Now, if we put uh, uh, A, that is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 60 into this cost function, we will get the value of cost equal to 3000. Next, if we put the value of this B coordinates, that is uh, 10 and 30, into this equation, we will get the value of cost function is equal to 1900. Similarly, for coordinate C, we get the value of cost function equal to 1750. And again, for uh, value of D, we will get uh, the cost function is equal to 20, uh, 2000. So these are all the feasible alternatives available for the operation managers. Uh, and out of which we'll have to again uh, select some uh, optimum uh, combination. Now what is actually meant by this combination? Let's talk about the point D. Point D means if we are only producing that uh, product A or X1 and we don't produce for product Y, then the total cost will be equal to 2000. Similarly, what is meant or what is the combination at this particular point C? The point C indicates that if we produce 25 units of uh, first product and 15 units of second product, then the total cost will be equal to 1750. If we compare all of these uh, costs, it is clear that this is our minimum cost because in this case we are interested in the minimization, not the maximization. So this is our minim minimum cost and what is the final decision? We should produce 25 units of X1 and uh, 15 units of uh, X2 uh, in order to have that minimum cost that is 1750. So this is the example that how we can minimize the cost by using that uh, linear programming method. Okay class, let's take another example. The Queen City Nursery manufactures bags of potting soil from composite and topsoil. So these are the two components of that uh, potting soil, that is the composite and topsoil. Each cubic foot of composite cost 12 cents. Again, while reading this scenario or while reading these uh, problems, you, what you'll have to do, you'll have to identify the cost function you'll have to identify the different constraints. That is the purpose of going through uh, uh, that particular situation. Now, we have the idea that uh, if each cubic foot of composite costs 12 cents, 12 cents means 0.12. That is the 12th part of that 100. So 0.12 is the cost for single cubic foot of uh, composite. Now, what are the constraints? Now this uh, each cubic foot of composite cost 12 cents and contains 4 pounds of sand, 3 pounds of clay and 5 pounds of humus. Now these are actually uh, decision variables. That is the decision variables are related to that composite and that topsoil. Now each cubic foot of uh, topsoil cost 20 cents again. If we produce 1 cubic foot of topsoil it will cost us 20 cents. So up till now, um, uh, what is the cost function? We can um, ide always identify the cost function. Then that in this particular case, the cost function will be equal to 0.1 to x1 if we represent x1 for that uh, composite function and uh, plus 0.2 x2 if we represent x2 by that for that uh, topsoil function. So this is um, our cost function actually. Each cubic foot of topsoil costs 20 cents and contains 3 pounds of sand, 6 pounds of clay and 12 pounds of humus. Each bag of potting soil must contain at least 12 pounds of sand. Now what is this? This is the constant for that particular uh, component sand. At least 12 pounds of clay. At least means either we should have to equal to this amount or we should have to greater than uh, this amount but we cannot uh, take uh, less than that amount so this is the particular case of again equal to greater than so these values help us to identify those constraints graphically or with the corner points find the best combination of composite and topsoil now composite and topsoil these are our decision variables which may be represented by x1 and x2 or which may be represented by x and y 
that meets the stated conditions at the lowest cost per bag and identify the lowest cost possible. So class what we did, we just analyze uh, uh, this problem and after analyzing this problem we have the idea of that cost function, we have the idea of different type of constraints which are again related to sand, clay, humus. So we can always uh, draw that uh, inequalities uh, for each of these um, the constraints. Now let's put um, all the uh, information in the form of a table. Now you can see that uh, this is the case of Queen City Nursery and uh, we were talking about the three constraints. One constraint is related to sand, the other constraint is related to clay, the third constraint is related to humus as uh, we have identified by going through that particular situation and problem. This is the cost function that is 0.12 of composite and 0 plus 0 0.2 of uh, topsoil. So what will be our cost function? Our cost function will be c is equal to 0.12x plus 0.2y. Uh, so this is our cost function and what will be our constraint functions? Our constraint functions will be as you can see from this table and also taking um, going through the information uh, in that particular situation. We must know that uh, our constraints will be 4x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 12 that is the sand constraint. 3x plus 6y is greater than or equal to 12 that is the clay constraint. Then 5x plus 12y is greater than or equal to 10 that is the humus constraint and again we have identified these constraints by these numbers 1, 2 and 3. Now up till now what we did we identify the cost function, we identify the different constraints represented in the form of inequalities. Now again this is the case of cost minimization that is we are interested to minimize the cost. Now again um, students uh, now you have uh, enough practice to uh, solving the different equations. For the equation 1, this is the equation 1 putting the value of x is equal to 0 and putting the value of y uh, is equal to 0 1 by 1, we can get a point uh, 3 and 0. That is the point on x axis where x coordinate is 3 and y coordinate is 0 and uh, similarly we can get another point that is 0 4 that is the y axis or the y uh, intercept and by uh, connecting these two points on the graph we can have that line uh, equation for this particular constraint that is the constraint 1. For the second line uh, 2 that is the line uh, equation 3x plus 6y is equal to 12 again putting x is equal to 0 we get y is equal to 2 putting y is equal to 0 we get x is equal to 4 so these are the two points which may be drawn on the graph in order to represent it in the form of a line. For line 3 that is 5x plus 12y is equal to 10. Putting x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 0 0.833. So this is the point uh, which is uh, 0 and 0 0.833, that is the x coordinate is 0 and y coordinate is 0 0.833. Similarly, we can get the other point that is uh, the x intercept or uh, 2, 0. Now again, by putting these two particular points, we can uh, draw a line on the graph. Now let's uh, discuss about the drawing of these lines on the graph. Now this is a sort of graph after putting those particular lines on this graph. Again, you have the x-axis, you have the y-axis. First of all, we will draw that line 1 on uh, this particular graph. Now this is the line 1. This is the line 1 which has the y intercept equal to 0, 04 and x intercept is equal to 30 so this is the first line equation now if we consider only this equation then uh, what is the area or the feasible area for this particular line 1 away from the line 1 that is the area all the area away from the line 1 is feasible uh, because of that equal to and greater than 2 condition but of course this is not the only constraint, we will have to uh, deal uh, with the other constraint as well. In the same fashion we will draw this line 2 on this graph with these uh, coordinates that is 4, 0 and 0, 2. So this is the line again, the area away from this particular line is the area feasible for the line 2. Similarly, 
if we draw that particular line 3 on this graph, we can get the uh, line in uh, with the coordinates 0 and 0 0.833 on uh, y axis and the coordinates 2 and 0 on x axis. So this is the line for equation number 3. Again, the feasible area for equation 3 is the area away from that uh, line 3. Now again, we are interested to fulfill all the constraints, all the limitations, then we will be able to uh, produce the um, uh, combination of the different products. So feasible area in this particular case will uh, is that uh, uh, highlighted uh, in this particular graph and you can see we are uh, now able to identify the different uh, corner points. Our corner points are the point A whose value we already know that is the 0, 4. These are the coordinates of uh, corner point A. The other corner point is point B. Now point B class is the intersection of line 1 and intersection of line 2. So how can we calculate the coordinates of B? We will solve the equation 1 and equation 2 in order to find the coordinates of B. Another uh, corner point uh, in that feasible area is that point C. So again C point is the combination or the intersection of line 2 and line 1. So again we will solve equation 1 and equation 2 in order to find the coordinates of uh, um, that point C. Now let's solve these equations. Again this is the equation 1, this is the equation 2 in order to find the coordinates of B by using simultaneous method we can get the value of B equal to 2.4 and 0 0.8 that is the X coordinate is 2.4 and the Y coordinate is 0 0.8. Okay class, in this similar fashion uh, we will have to draw a cost table uh, which will help us to identify the different alternatives. Now this is the uh, cost table. We have identified three corner points. The value of A and the value of C were already known. The value of B was not known but we have calculated the coordinates or the values of B by the intersection of that uh, respective lines and now we will put one by one the value of X which is actually represented for that uh, composite part of uh, soil and the value of y which actually represent the top soil part of uh, soil. So by putting these values one by one in that cost function we will get the value of uh, cost function equal to 0 0.8 at that point A. 0 0.448 for that particular point B and equal to 0 0.48 for that particular point C. Now uh, you are able to identify that what is the optimal combination of uh, those uh, uh, products or parts of X and Y. If you are able to combine or produce that 2.4 uh, kg or whatever is that part of X and 0.8 uh, of Y then we will be able to minimize our cost that is uh, 0. 448. So this is the minimum cost we can uh, identify within the given uh, limits and within the given constraints. So again uh, class we have identified and we have uh, discussed and solved a practical problem that how we can minimize our cost in the particular scenario. Let's discuss the last important example of the uh, maximization problem uh, so that we can have the idea that uh, how we can um, uh, solve the different uh, problems having the different sort of uh, constraints. Now Rinzi Farms grows sugarcane and soya beans on its 500 acres of land. Now class, after reading that particular line, you must have uh, in your mind that this is a sort of constraint that the total lands are available uh, for this particular case or for this particular farms is 500 acres. Okay? If we uh, represent that sugar cane by uh, X and uh, that soya bean by Y, then the one of the constraint will be X plus Y is equal to 500 acres. Now this is our first constraint. Now please uh, go on through the uh, uh, example. An acre of soya bean brings a uh, $1,000 contribution to the overhead and profit. An acre of so uh, sugar cane has a contribution of $2,000. Now again, 
this information tells us about the uh, objective function that if you are able to produce uh, an acre of soya bean, it will give you a profit of $1,000. And if you are able to produce one acre of sugar cane, we are able to produce $2,000. Okay, if you are rep uh, if you represent the um, ideal quantity of uh, soya bean and sugar cane by x y or uh, x one x two, then our profit function will be what? It will be 1,000 x one plus 2,000 x two. So this is our profit function. That is 1,000 x one plus 1,000 x two. Because of a government program, no more than 200 acres may be planted uh, in soya beans, and uh, we cannot plant uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 200 acres for soya beans. So that is the restriction imposed uh, by a uh, government. During the planting season, 1,200 hours of planting time will be available. So the total time available for planting is 1200 so that gives you the idea about another constant each acre of soybean requires 2 hours and while each acre of sugarcane requires 5 hours so class you can have the idea about the uh, another constant that total hours of uh, planting available are 1200 hours and uh, each acre of soybean requires 2 hours and each acre of sugar cane requires 5 hours so another constraint may be 2x plus 5y should be equal to or less than 1200 so this is another constraint the company seeks maximum contribution that is the profit from its planting decision now what is being required in this particular case that is uh, we'll have to uh, decide about the decision variables and after analyzing this particular situation, again, we can always identify uh, the uh, decision variables, the objective function, and the constraints. We'll have to plot the constraints, and we'll have to solve it graphically uh, by using that corner point method. Uh, we've already discussed uh, uh, many examples uh, relating to this sort of problem. So you uh, people may not have problem in solving that uh, particular uh, example. Now again, uh, we are interested in uh, the different constraints. One constraint is the uh, land constraint, that is total land available, and total land available in this particular case is 500. So either we are growing that soya bean or sugar cane, we cannot grow uh, on the land which is more than 500 acres. So one of the constraints related to that acres uh, of land is x1 plus x2 must be less than equal to 500. Now again class, this is our first constraint. The next constraint is related to soya bean and this is what that uh, we cannot have uh, uh, soya bean uh, greater than equal to 200. It should always be less than equal to uh, 200. So this is our second constraint that the x1 value should be equal to or less than 200. Our third constraint uh, is related to that uh, planting uh, point of view. That is 2x1 plus 5x2 should be equal to or less than 1200. Now class, we have identified the profit function. That is z is equal to 1000x1 plus 2000x2. We have identified uh, the constraints and the, uh, inequalities which are represented by these uh, numbers 1, 2, and 3. And now we are in a position to solve the, uh, each of these constraints. Again, we can use the similar method by putting 1 by 1 uh, x1 and x2 is equal to 0 in uh, all of the three equations. We can uh, get the two points which can help us to be drawn uh, these constraints on that uh, graph. So similarly, we will uh, solve uh, the third constraint by putting x1 is equal to 0 and uh, x2 uh, is equal to 0 in that particular equation. And we can get the point of that 600 and 0. Now this is the graph uh, for this particular situation. Now this is our uh, one of the constraint while the other constraint is uh, this one and this is the constraint uh, related to that soya bean uh, where x1 uh, should be less than or equal to 200. So we have all drawn all of the th these three lines. You remember that we have a constraint that is 
x1 is equal to or less than 200 as there is no value of x2 in this particular case so what we will do we will draw this line parallel to y axis as we did in the uh, previous example so we have drawn all of these three constraints in the form of these lines now again in all of the three constraints we are interested in less than and uh, equal to area so by drawing all of these three lines you can easily identify that what is the area which is less than uh, for more uh, all of the three lines so this is uh, the highlighted area which actually represents your uh, feasible area again we can operate at any of the point of this uh, feasible region but of course we'll have to find out that point which will uh, maximize our profit again we can use that uh, uh, corner point method uh, and what is the corner point method we'll have to identify the different corners and we can have the different alternatives uh, f um, for mm, these corners and then we will be able to f uh, identify that what is the optimal corner point and we have already uh, discussed that the profit will only be maximum at any one of the corner points so in this case uh, our feasible region is 0 a b c this is the highlighted area now again points 0 is the origin point where of course the value of x1 and x2 is equal to 0 and we are not interested actually in the, that particular point the next point is a we, uh, whose coordinates we already know that is the uh, either case that is uh, the value of x2 is 0 and x1 is equal to 240 in this particular case now this is the um, uh, value for b that is the b coordinate but we don't know about the coordinates of b but we can always calculate the coordinates of b because it is the intersection of this constraint and which is represented by a line parallel to the y-axis and this constraint so we can always solve these two equations uh, uh, and uh, equations of lines in order to find the coordinates of b and the third corner point is c that is 200 and 0 so let's solve these equations for let's uh, solve it for coordinate b so coordinate b is the point of intersection of the constraint 2 and constraint 3 and our second constraint was x1 uh, equal to 200 that is x1 equal to less than uh, 200 you know about the uh, uh, that is the constraint about soya bean so we will put x1 is equal to 200 into this equation that is the third equation and we can get the value of x2 is equal to 160 so these are the coordinates for that particular point b so this point b is the intersection of uh, this equation 2 and equation 3 so again we are in a position to uh, find out or maximize that uh, the profit function now in this particular case the profit function was z is equal to 1000 x1 plus 2000 x2 again class we have identified the four uh, important points which are actually the corner points these are the relevant coordinates for each of these um, uh, corner points and again what we'll have to do we'll have to put each of these uh, points into this uh, profit function so that we can have the idea that uh, what are the different feasible alternatives available before the operation managers or any decision making manager so in this particular case we'll put x1 x2 equal to 0 and of course the z will be equal to 0 which is not the area of interest for uh, manager the next point is a where x1 is uh, where the first coordinate is uh, 0 and the second coordinate is 240 and our relevant profit in this particular case will be equal to 480,000 again the third point coordinates are 200 and 160 and uh, if we put these values uh, in this uh, profit equation we can get the value of profit equal to 520,000 there is another point C uh, that if we put these uh, coordinates values in this uh, profit function we will get the profit function equal to 200,000 now we have four values and of course we can see that this is the maximum value of profit that is 520,000 and uh, 
this these coordinates are giving you the idea that what should be the best combination of the two different products so that we can maximize our profit and what is the maximum profit that is the 520000 so class uh, this is uh, the example we just uh, discussed in order to better understand uh, the linear programming problems and most importantly that uh, maximization of the problem which uh, we have already discussed uh, in the previous lecture and also we discussed some important examples uh, either for the maximization of the profit or the minimization of the, um, the cost so after doing so much practice for these uh, uh, questions I think you must be well aware of that graphical method of uh, linear programming that how we can identify our profit function how we can formulate and how we can convert the different limitations uh, or the constraints in the form of equations and uh, inequalities and then finally how we can draw a graph in order to put those constraints on that graph in the form of different lines and how we can find out the different points of intersection uh, for these lines on uh, a particular graph and finally how we can uh, draw a table uh, which tells us about the different alternatives about the different uh, combinations so that we may be able to either maximize our profit or uh, minimize our cost so class these were some of the examples uh, we discussed uh, in our today's lecture and some of the previous lectures and now I would suggest you uh, all that you must have uh, find out uh, the similar problems from, from your textbooks uh, I have recommended uh, already uh, two of the textbooks to you that is uh, one uh, written by the Hazer and his co-authors and the other one is written by Taha both are very good books so you must have extracted the similar examples that is the examples of uh, relating to uh, maximization of profit or uh, minimization of cost and of course you uh, have learned up till now only the graphical method and we have not touched the simplex method yet so after doing a uh, lot of practice about that graphical method inshallah we will move that uh, a uh, more comprehensive method of uh, that uh, linear programming problems that is the simplex method but mm, I would like uh, and I would uh, expect from all of you uh, that you must take the similar examples you must solve these examples uh, so that you can find out that how to draw the graphs and how to find out the feasible region and how we can find out the optimal points to that uh, corner point method and finally how we can maximize or uh, minimize our cost again which are the most important and uh, prime uh, functions of uh, uh, operations management and again I would also like to uh, recall our definition of management that is management is science and what we discussed in that proper definition that we are always interested to take the decisions on some calculations on some a mathematical or statistical techniques on some logical conclusion or on some sound facts and figures so that is the best example in order to understand that uh, concept uh, that is the linear programming that uh, now you are uh, well aware of uh, this technique of linear programming that how this technique can help us uh, of course under the different assumptions in the real scenario but it of course helps us to uh, find out the different optimal solutions so that we can achieve our uh, prime functions of that profit maximization or uh, cost minimization okay class uh, this is the uh, end of our lecture and I hope you will work uh, at your uh, homes uh, to practice uh, about all of these uh, uh, related problems and wish you good luck and thank you. Khuda Hafiz.